Hello everyone and welcome to my review of Kiyosai's Animal Circus. This little volume features the amazing work of Kawanabe Kiyosai, so if you want to see what's inside, stay tuned. But first of all, if you are new here, I post new book reviews on my channel almost every single day, so if you want to wake up to some new reading inspiration every day, feel free to stick around. Now let's talk about Kiyosai's Animal Circus. I was introduced to the artist uh, Kawanabe Kiyosai is his name through another book that I have reviewed on my channel and that is Japanese Yokai and Other Supernatural Beings. This was just a brief introduction to supernatural beings and imagery in Japanese art. I loved it. I thought it was a fantastic book. I want to actually purchase a copy which isn't something I always want to do at this stage in my life because I have to move all the books quite a lot because I rent. So I want to pick up a copy of this book. It's very good and I was introduced to Kiyosai's artwork and imagery. So I decided to seek out some more books. One of the books I sought out and found was Kiyosai's Animal Circus. Kiyosai was a famous Japanese artist. He lived from 1831 to 1889 and he is very established particularly in the field of animal imagery. So he's not the only person doing animal imagery in Japanese art. Japanese art has a lot of featuring of animal imagery. It's big in the field and there's a lot of meaning and hidden symbolism, if you aren't familiar with it, that goes along with this artwork and this animal in imagery. However, Kyosai is a famous example of an artist who does animal imagery, so that's something that he is known for. The book is divided into sections. We have Kyosai's signature animals, which were crows and frogs. Then we have familiar creatures. We have fortune bringers and divine beasts in section three. Four, we have trick, tri I don't know why I struggled. Tricksters, mischievous animals, and monsters. And five, we have visitors from abroad and Aesop's animals, which are just foreign creatures that Kiyosai drew when they would visit Japan or from the tales, Aesop's fables that he, that was translated into Japanese. So those are the sections of the book. So I'm just gonna go through and start showing the fantastic art because the art really is the show here. This book is by Sanamuro Kota and there is some sections that include text like a biographical section so just keep that in mind but really the star of the show is the art. So the first section the crows and frogs. The first thing I thought when I saw that in the introduction was how exciting can crows and frogs be but something about his art it just comes off the page and I just I just love them. This also reminds me of the crows that are featured in Ogata Gecko's The Book on Meiji Art or Art in Meiji Japan. It's called Printed and Painted and I have the review of that also on my channel. And the, the crows just popped out of that page. In fact, I think one of Kyosai's crows was featured in that book as well. The crows are just, they just come off the page in a way that, I don't know, I just can't describe. I never thought I would be so interested in crow prints, but I really think I spent the vast majority of my time in this book going over the crow and the frogs. The next one's on page 26 and 27. So one thing I do like that this book does is it does the zoom in feature, kind of. So this is the full print over here, but then it zooms in on this side. So in this case, we have frogs. And something that Kyosai does is he has these animals acting like human. So he has them, in this case, there's some people sumo wrestling and there's people observing around them and the frogs are almost acting like people would at this sort of social outing. So we have the full print here and then we have the zoom in here. The more featured focused, I don't know what you would call it, zoom in. Yeah. Here's another one. We have some examples of just frogs acting like humans. This was just something that Kiyosai did. This is again in his section that's featured. Then we have these sections. This is on page 40, 41. These are a little bit more busy than some of the ones that were just crows. So the crows, the frogs, the ones we saw in the first chapter were kind of just focused on the animal. These two scenes are much busier, I guess you could say, but I do like it. I feel like I could spend a long time looking at each one of these. The next ones I'm going to show you are 42 and 43. These two feature a reversal of roles. So in this one, we have frogs that have tied up a snake. And this one we have mice that have cornered a cat. Although interestingly enough, there's a cat that is not so tied up that's actually featuring an archer on top over here. So I'm not sure what was going on in this. But we have two prints that are also kind of equally busy or more busy than the ones that were just a crow sitting on a branch. But these have the reversal of roll trope where a prey animal is tying up or keeping their predator at bay their common predator, I guess I could say. The next ones are on page 58 
and 59. Really all the prints and paintings in this book are worth looking at. I just can't sit here and literally show you every single page or I feel like it would just kind of just be a show off. So you can get the book yourself and look at all the prints. So I'm just picking a couple that I liked. Here's one where you have birds that are almost like in school or something. On this side, again, this is another one of those animals acting like humans. And this one I just thought was really pretty. And finally, I'll show you one on page 91. And this one has, um, this section talks about how even though there's cats and these catfish, this is a political commentary on the government and some of the interactions the government would have with the pleasure quarters in the districts or the cities that the populations lived and worked in. So there was some political commentary, but we have a cat, and we have a catfish that's being dragged out of the water by two other cats. So I just thought this one was kind of funny. A conclusion or comparison, I should say, that I did draw, and let me just put an asterisk next to this. I am not an art historian. I took some art classes in college, some art history classes, and I found it very, very interesting, but art history was not my major. I am not an expert in this. I just read a lot and I have a lot of opinions. So this is my opinion and I could be very wrong, but I feel like when I was reading these or when I was looking at these art pieces, especially these busier ones like this one, this is a battle between two frogs and it's very busy and everywhere I look in this piece, there's something new going on. Every interaction between every frog and the other frog is unique. And that's where the book does that zoom in section, like it does on the next page to kind of focus on certain scenes that you're supposed to look at. It reminded me of, and I may butcher the name here, Hieronymus Bosch, the one who did that Garden of Earthly Delights painting. You know the one I'm talking about, put it into Google, where every little piece of his painting, there was something unique going on. And I feel like I could look at those pieces by him for a long time because they're so unique and weird and interesting and I got the same vibe from some of Kyosai's work that these these the ones I'm calling busy the one there's a, the ones the prints the paints where there's a lot going on I feel like I could just look at forever like that one that I just showed you of the frogs fighting I mean I probably spent I don't know how long just looking at everything going on and I felt like the more I looked the more I saw and then the more I looked even more I saw and it just kept going and I've had that same experience when looking at a Bosch painting um and I, I I really hope I'm saying that name correctly that the more I looked the more I saw going on and then the more I looked the more I saw going on and the more I looked the more I saw going on I had the same experience with a totally different artist on the totally different side of the world but it's an experience and a feeling that I like so I really really appreciated it one comment when looking at these photos sometimes despite the little um introductory paragraph with each section, I felt like I wanted commentary on each individual print. And then I reached the end and found that the commentary on the individual prints are on page 111 and on in the list of illustrations with notes on selected works. So um, don't make the mistake I did. And don't think that the author didn't include any notes on the prints because they did, they're just in a different section. And I have done this with many, 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 many volumes in the past. So I don't know when I don't see notes on the artwork, I don't check the back immediately. I don't know why every time I have to read through the volume or read through the book, get to the end and then think, oh yeah, the prints are back, the notes are back here. Genius. So don't make the mistake I did. The notes are on the back on page 111. There's plenty of interesting commentary. I kind of had to read the whole book again now with the notes when I saw them. So don't do that. But I do highly recommend picking up a copy of Kyosai's Animal Circus and giving it a read, browsing through it. If you like art, if you just want to look at good art, if you just want to look at interesting pictures, I think this is a great piece to get started. It's not too intimidating. It's not too academic. Everyone can enjoy it and it is an enjoyable read. If you have any thoughts or comments on this book or Kyosai's art or anything else you want to include, including books you think I should be reading and that you'd like to suggest to me on this topic, please leave in the comments below. I'd love to receive them. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great rest.